think that everyone's reactions are going to be, what the fuck is going on right now? This is bananas. Frank Zappa died in 1993 when I was a kid, so I never got a chance to see him perform live. I spent a lot of time as a kid listening to his music in my dad's record collection, and then as a teenager I got to explore it some more by buying the Ryko Disc releases. Now as an adult, I've had the opportunity to catch some of the very incredible Zappa Plays Zappa shows, as well as enjoying some of the high definition releases like the uh, Roxy and Elsewhere Blu-ray. And then there's all that amazing live footage on YouTube. I mean, it's incredible how much stuff is out there. Uh, these modern experiences and products have given me a pretty good sense of what it was probably like to see Frank play live when he was alive. Well, in recent years, his son Amit has been working on a 21st century Zappa concert experience. Partnering with a hologram production company called Illusion, he's bringing an entirely new presentation of his father's creativity on the road. The show is called The Bizarre World of Frank Zappa, and it meets its first audiences in late April 2019. It features a live band accompanied by a three-dimensional, computer-generated holographic projection of many multimedia elements, including Frank himself performing new songs and unreleased guitar solos. And this live band isn't just any, any old band. <laughs> I mean, these are Frank's former bandmates, and these guys are some of the most dedicated and talented musicians that were ever in any of his bands. They're all incredibly passionate about Frank's music, and I'm super excited at the possibilities of what we're gonna hear when they get to perform. Now Frank was always pushing the boundaries of music and politics, humor, art, technology, animation, and media. The bizarre world of Frank Zappa brings Frank into 21st century technology, beliefs, and expectations. And I have a feeling things are going to get very, very weird. It's a totally different type of entertainment from a, from a standard concert. So it, it, people shouldn't come expecting a replication of an experience that they had, you know, 30 years ago when they went to see a Frank Zappa concert. This is utilizing a lot of techniques that have never been utilized before in quite this way in an attempt to create a very different kind of, uh, you know, experience live. You know, my mother would pull me in and, and you know, no one was thinking outside of the box. You know, and, and I would say that it probably would have happened sooner um, when my mother was alive if, if other companies kind of were willing to go to these creative places that we're, that we're going to now, you know? There just wasn't a company out there willing to do it. And um, after becoming close with, with, uh, with Jeff um, and really saying, hey, you, you know, Here's the deal. This isn't just about projecting someone back out on stage, and you know we want to try to do something different and, and explore new ways of storytelling in a way in in ways that my dad did. It's hard to discuss almost because it's there's nothing there's there's very little frame of reference for what it's going to be like. So I I guess I can understand why some people are uh, reflexively. Uh, responding negatively just because they the, all they have to 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 imagine what it's like is a very limited scope based on you know whatever they've they've seen or experienced or what they think they know about what a hologram show is and that's like anything that's been done with that technology up until now is is not it does not represent what can be done with the technology and I think this show represents a step towards how far out, how crazy can we get with this stuff? And ideally, it's going to result in an incredibly powerful and, and really peculiar night of entertainment, you know, with live musicians doing what they do in the, in the midst of it. So it's going to be a, a multi-level thing. Um, and a lot of unreleased Frank performances, uh, and we're playing some unreleased Frank compositions, and and it's it's you know it's a very layered evening of stuff, and I and this there's going to be something there for everyone who's into Frank, 
uh, I'm super jazzed about it, you know. I'm, I think it's going to be really cool. Well, you know, it's, it's so interesting because holographic technology, I remember when, many years ago, when uh, Disney decided to put this holographic technology of these heads, these haunted heads, in their haunted house. And that was big news at the time. And I went and saw it, and I knew, I just instinctively felt that this technology was going to evolve into something beyond our wildest imaginations at some point. Have we gotten there? No, we're far from it. Far from it. You know, I mean, somebody is going to wake up and say, <clears throat> this holographic technology is, can be really powerful and can be used for a certain convenience and quality of life experience that's beyond where the technology is at right now. I mean, for instance, I, I'm looking for the day when I can sit in my room in my studio and have a conference with people in Japan as if they're sitting in the room with me or I'm sitting in their room, you know what I mean? And this is, it's, it has the potential to completely change home entertainment as we know it, you know, so much more, you know. But the technology is slowly evolving. It's because it's expensive, and to develop it takes a lot of courage and expense, but it's happening. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when, when holographic technology first started being used to reproduce people for concerts and stuff or for performances, you know, it was, it was still very limiting. It was amazing in a sense. You know, you get to see Mariah Carey singing something in 10 different countries, you know, and it's as if you're there. But uh, it still is just a hologram of somebody, you know. So as more people come along to improve this technology and the experience of it, we're going to start seeing some really cool things. And that's what my expectations are of this Zappa hologram tour. I'm, I'm lucky in this sense that there's so much uh, audio and video um, of Frank, and because he was so opinionated um, and so smart, and he was, you know, a, f a futurist, um, a lot of the decisions I make uh, are really because he's talked about them, you know, or, or he showed an interest in them, you know, like the like the hologram show was something that he talked to me about dozens of times, you know? So, I mean, it kind of blows my mind when people are like, oh, Frank would never do something like this. I'm like, well, how much of a fan are you? Uh, because he writes about it in his book, in the Real Frank Zappa book, in chapter 18, which I could say tell him blue in the face, and people are like, no, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> which makes me, which is like, all right, well, look, I'm, I'm trying to make an experience happen that uh, it does a couple of things. One, I know my dad was really interested in it. Um, and two, I get to creatively flex my, my muscles uh, in terms of, you know, putting the show together, right? right. So I had to come up with the storylines, the visuals. I d you know, all of this is, um, for me, emotional in the sense that... Um, you know the the conversations I've I had with him over the the you know the very short period of time I got to have him in my life. Um, you know he inspired me in so many ways. So uh, you know things he showed me, things we watched on TV, uh, movies that we saw, um, sounds he exposed me to. Uh, it's as much about a love letter for me. To, to my father and to, and to my mother um, as much as it is to, I think, the fans. You know, I want to, you know, the, I, there's no other way. If you want to go see and hear Frank play his music, um, this is the only way to do that. I mean, other people can play his music, sure. But if you want to hear Frank's guitars or hear his vocals um, with his live band, um, that's the great part about technology now is that we can try to do something you know I'm this is an experience it's it's a um, something that I hope people really enjoy you know you don't have to be a Zappa fan I think and you can come to this show and and have your mind blown 
you know, and that and that's that's the other thing I tried to set out to do, um, and because it has there's so much technology involved in making this happen. I think we have a hopefully a good shot at um, having different people discover Frank's music because I think we'll get fans, you know, and and hopefully the goal is to make new fans, um, and because there's so much music that Frank recorded, um, you, you know, if people. If people like what we're doing, we can keep adding to it and change it up. And uh, so I'm I'm pretty pretty excited about the bizarre world. I'm very excited about it because first of all, it's Frank, and you know, for Frank fans like myself, um, his music is a treasure. It's a life treasure. Do you know what I mean? And for any opportunity to see it being performed, be it, be it Dweezil performing it or another band or a hologram tour, I can't imagine why anybody that's as moved and touched in their life by Zappa as myself would not attend something like that. I mean, it's, it, what's, there's various levels to it that, that are exciting. At, at, its, at its base... The, 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 I've been talking to Joe Travers for years about we got to play some Zappa together, and uh, and we wanted to do it with Scott Tunis. That would be, was like it would be great for. And then we're, who else do we play with, you know? And then finally, uh, Joe told me one night, it's going to happen. You know, it's uh, on its into it because for for various reasons connected to the fact that joe travers full-time gig is working for for the zappa family trust and being in the vault and and doing the vaultmeister gig for him to 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 get a band together playing zappa music it it it, it helps in a lot of ways for it to be like a, a a zappa family trust involved project so we were just kind of waiting because i wanted to do it with joe we we're just kind of waiting to see if if Amit would be interested in doing something at some point with frank's music in a live format. And then one night, Travers said, we're doing it, Amit's ready, he wants to do a, the you know, Frank Zappa band. And I'm like, oh, right on, that's great. And then he says, hologram tour. And my you know, initial thought is people are gonna freak out, you know, which is true, <laughs> people are freaking out. Um, but then you, know, you, you start thinking about, well, what could this mean? I, it's, I, I can't imagine a Frank Zappa tour, a hologram tour that's just Frank Zappa standing on stage being a hologram. It would have to be something more interesting than that, because you want it to be something that Frank would be interested in, and that's 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 always been, you know, part of what's guided me whenever I, I choose to do some Zappa-related thing. I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that there's something there that would would have been uh, at least entertaining and and hopefully you know stimulating and amusing for Frank. And Amit's vision for the for the, the the holographic material in this show is so insane and so wide ranging that I know that if Frank saw this show, he would be sitting there going <laughs> doing the the Frank laugh uh, for a large swath of of this show. And he, he wouldn't be. I don't imagine he'd be as interested at, in looking at himself. But that's. That's also a Frank-like thing. Frank was not into being venerated or lionized or anything. He was, he, you know, would, he swore, and I think that is largely true, that he had zero interest in his legacy or what anybody thought about him after he was gone. So I think he would dig the fact that this show is, is visually focused on, you know, Concepts and characters, and and just being inspired by the music in a, in a much more freewheeling way, and that the appearances that Frank himself makes as a hologram during the show is almost like cameos or like a character in the the whole tapestry. What it actually reminds me of is of uh, a few years ago they did a Two Hundred Motels live in Los Angeles and London, I believe. And they put out an album from uh, the Los Angeles show called 200 Motels The Suites, which is a really spectacular album. Uh, but Frank himself is a character in this thing in the same way that, that Frank was a rarely seen character in 200 Motels itself. But 
when they went through his manuscripts to play unreleased material for 200 Motels the Suites, he had written a lot more narration for himself. So they hired a guy to be Frank Zappa delivering this narration at the show. And it, to me, there was nothing weird or disrespectful about that. And, and th- that's the same way I feel about the holographic representation of Frank in this show. It's, it's, a, it's a character, it's part, it's undeniably a part of, of the bizarre world of Frank Zappa is, you know, who Frank Zappa was, is, is the, uh, how iconic he was visually, just the way he looked and everything, that's a part of the world. But the, the way that world is represented visually is, is, like, is bonkers. It's all over the place and it's, and it's really fun. People are already watching Frank on screens at home. Unfortunately, he's not around. And now this thing set is going to happen, and you get to see some unperformed music, uh, unreleased music, and uh, it's done with the right people and uh, with the probably the best equipment available at 2019's standards. And uh, so I, I can't see why you wouldn't like to go and see it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be great. So I, you know, I support it totally. <laughs> This, the band is is incredible. It's 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 elements of the best band that Frank ever had. I mean, you know, we all know Mike Keneally, um, and and for those of you who don't, just imagine a, a musician that whose expression is like effortless and perpetually inspired at all times. That's Mike Keneally, ne- fearless and completely inspired. I mean, he's a freak, you know. I, I, I'm so inspired by him, th- and through the years too, you know. And you know, I'm. I'm uh, he was. Uh, Frank had said to him once that uh, his ears are the best ears on any guitar player he's ever had in the band. Wow. Yeah. So that tells you how Frank felt about him, you know. And he's headlining this uh, this band. And the other members of the band are obviously forming um, a really powerful Zappa unit. And the thing that they have that's so important is that love and respect for Frank. You know, that transcends a job. Right. You know, so you know that the quality is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, But what about the technology? Well, I, I don't know. But I do know this. Amit uh, is focusing on expanding the technology and doing things with it that are unexpected. I uh, I believe just from the, some of the stuff that he sent me that people have, don't know what this really is going to be. I, all I could do is try to explain the ideas that were in my head and 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 really, you know, ask them to go on this leap of faith with me. Um, and so much of it. None of it had been figured out. There's no roadmap. We're inventing something. This right. is like, this doesn't happen. You know, you could, this is, you know, we're the only, you know, uh, illusion is the, you know, the company that, that uh, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Pazuti, who's become a really good friend of mine, um, you know, his, his, his desire to, to kind of preserve music or create new experiences um you know it's like he he didn't come from this this background he he quit his job was like i believe in this mm-hmm. you know and i and i got to say i'm a sucker for for anyone who you know wants to do, yeah and try to do something different now frank had a motto of anything anytime any place for no reason at all This long, unpronounceable acronym represented a spirit of improvisation and unpredictability that Frank's fans came to expect at each of his shows. The set lists were different every night, the solos were never pre-written, and uh, Frank would play the songs in various styles by using hand signals like piddling with a Rasta braid on the right side of my head. That means play reggae. If I pretend to twirl braids on both sides of my head, it means play ska. 
If I want something played heavy metal, I put both hands near my crotch and do big balls. <laughs> now these are some of the elements that made Frank such a great entertainer and so engaging for his audiences. So that left me wondering, how is this band going to bring this ethos into a show where they are playing alongside pre-recorded tracks? While we're uh, accompanying pre-recorded tracks, there is ostensibly less spontaneity, you know, because we're, we have to stay attached to, to this grid. But within that, there's a lot of room for expression. There's a lot of room for things to change up from night to night because most of the songs that we're accompanying tracks have long guitar solos. And they're unreleased guitar solos of Frank's. So the, the act of accompanying these these long unreleased solos I'm still even though you know we've been listening to them for a couple of weeks I'm still reacting to them very improvisationally as though you know Frank was on stage and we were just being musicians accompanying Frank as he plays a, a guitar solo during those moments of the of the the soloing it feels very real <laughs> it feels very spontaneous you know uh and then you know we have these these chunks during the night where we we're we're literally untethered and and we can kind of do what we want in a way. So, and then you know there's the the moments that are very tightly structured and we're playing arrangements that are written to be played a certain way. But that was exactly the same way as it was with Frank. We might as well been on a grid when we were playing you know specific composed sections uh, because they're meant to be done a certain way. Yeah. Um, but all these years later to be playing these songs again and with these people um, it's like it, it really does a number on you it's, it's like emotionally it's, it, there's, there's a lot going on here um, and it's uh, it's fantastic you know I, I feel privileged to be here yeah what's this If, you know, I, I just think, I, I just feel being a Zappa fan, I don't want to miss this event. That's right. I don't want to, I don't want to miss it when Dweezil's playing. I don't want to miss it when, when Ahmed is doing it. I don't, I don't want to miss it if quality musicians are fra playing Frank's music. Right. And the added bonus is the technology. And there has been a lot of bands playing his music already, like uh, Supper Play Supper, Band from Utopia, Grandmothers of Adventure, and all these bands. So this will be the first time you actually get to see uh, his own musicians, but playing with with him, with Frank. I mean, on screen. I mean, it's not nobody is is trying to say that Frank Frank will be there in person, but he will be on the screen. It's his music. It's I mean, just just go and see it. If you have an opportunity to see a show on this tour, I am definitely jealous of you right now. Seeing this show means you get to support great music, played by great musicians, and having a truly memorable evening that shatters all sorts of expectations. <laughs> so I think everyone on this tour is putting a lot on the line to make it happen, and that's the kind of thing that's worth paying money for and featuring here on Make Word Music. I'm also so glad that this band has the opportunity to get paid to play this music out on the road, and even some of it alongside Frank's actual tracks and performing new music that we've never heard before. There's no opportunity like that anywhere else. I'm also really glad to see a tour that tries to capture the spirit of Frank as a futurist, a technologist, an animation enthusiast, a live musician, a composer, a filmmaker, a producer, and a storyteller. I mean, we're likely not going to see another Frank Zappa in our lifetimes, so let's support and experience the creative visionary who's touched so many of our lives while we still have an opportunity to see and experience his art in a live setting. And for people like me who, you know, I was never old enough to see him perform, this is such a cool opportunity because Frank's music and all of the technology that's available today are coming together into a modern experience that is truly unlike anything else out there. And I think that's what Frank stood for, you know, pushing the boundaries. And so I'm really excited to see how this turns out. If you go to any of the shows, please let me know. I'd love to chat with you about it. 
Let me know in the comments or find me on social media. I'd love to chat. Thanks so much for checking this out. Hope you enjoyed it. Love, love, love.